Hello and welcome to this Android programming tutorial and today we're gonna make a, a very simple uh, Android application so this is a continuation of another video I have on YouTube so if you, if you haven't checked that out yet please do because that shows you how to set up the Android environment so you can start uh, making applications so after you've set up your environment follow the video all we need to do is fire up Eclipse and now while that's starting up let me just show you a quick sketch here of my beautiful application what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a single single page basically application which has a text box here a, it's technically called an edit text where a user can enter a, a, a length in centimeters so like you know a hundred centimeters or something like that and then there's a button here and if you click the button then uh, the, the program will take the hundred centimeters and convert it into inches so the inches will appear here whatever the result is and there's a label here says centimeters there'll be a label here saying inches and that's about it so Eclipse has started up we need to create a new Android project we're gonna go file new Android application project yeah, give it a name. I'm gonna call it converter. We need to give it a application name, a project name. I'm just gonna leave that as it is. And then we need to give it a package name. What the package name is is a, it's a globally unique identifier, especially if you want to upload it to to the Play Store. So it needs to be unique among all of the applications in the Play Store. So what people usually do is use your your domain. If you have a website, you use your domain in a like reverse reverse manner. So I have a mbasi.com or a com dot uh, whatever the application name is. You can call it whatever. So first name dot last name dot whatever. So it doesn't matter as long as it's globally unique. Uh, it's fine. Now, here are the few options about what is the minimum, uh, what is the minimum Android version you want your application to support. So, by default, it's set to 2.2. And here, if you see, if you hover the mouse over it, it's it. There's some information here, and it says if you start, if you support 2.2 and upwards, you reach approximately 95% of Android devices out there today so let's see here let me use uh, you can find some Google publishes some nice bit of information about uh, about the Android versions which are which are currently in circulation and the number of devices using each version so I'll put this link in the in the description so here you can see every 14 days they update this chart so you can see that Froyo which is 2.2 which is the one we are we are supporting and upward so Froyo and upward Fro, Froyo has 12 percent of the market Eclair 2.1 has 3.1 so you might consider going lower because 3.1 is still quite a sizable number of people so depending on your application you you might want to include those people too because those are basically those are downloads you're leaving on the table if you don't support these these users so Froya is 12 2.3 most people as you can see are on 2.33 2.37 over 50 percent a few very few on honeycomb and 25 percent on ice cream sandwich and again a few on jelly beans so you have to make a decision here basically uh, you might have to do a little more work if you want to support everyone I mean you can go all the way back to 
or you can just leave it like this. I'm gonna leave it like this because this is a very simple app we're going to do. Uh, now there's a target SDK here. The target SDK is the uh, if you again if you hover the mouse it gives you some information. So it's the one you are saying this is the one I've developed it for specifically for and I, and I've tested this and if you put the target SDK at this level Android will not do any automatic backward compatibility stuff because otherwise your app can sort of look weird and in in sort of in future version so if you put this to low it can use some android will do some automatic like backward compatibility stuff to 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 try and make your app work in future versions and uh, the compile is the one it's compiling against so uh, again uh, some information so it's usually set to the to the current high, uh, highest available android version there's a theme here a theme is uh, the look and basically the look of the app the look and feel so hollow is the is the new sort of uh, design and style guideline that google is pushing for android so we're gonna have a hollow light theme so let me just see if i can get some hollow so this particular look is hollow uh, this design style that that uh, the Android people say you should go for. So just gonna leave it at that. Next, now there's some like options here. Uh, create an activity. This basically means this t uh, tool will automatically create like a basic skeleton for us for our app. Uh, create custom launcher icon. This is a new tool that they're including in in the Android SDK basically it helps you make your application icon we, and we'll see that in a minute other than that uh, just leave everything as it is this is the uh, application launch icon creation tool so there's some basic defaults you can use here you can you can pick of course eventually what you want to do is go into like Photoshop create your own icon and then uh, have different sizes for different uh, screen density de on devices and different screen sizes and things like that or you can pick one of the clip art uh, pictures probably not the best of ideas close that I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is go to the text here and you can simply type a name and it will Sort of create an icon for you. I'm gonna call it conv for converter. Uh, let's say square. We make it square. We increase the padding a bit, maybe. Maybe without the the dot. Yeah, I change. So let's see background color. Put it black. Let's see circle. No, I don't like circle. Yeah, that's pretty decent. Now in the real world this icon is pretty crucial because that's when people are scrolling through the App Store, I mean the Android Play Store. I'm gonna get sued here. When people are scrolling through the Play Store, this is one of the first things they see, so you need a very, an eye-catching icon, it's good to have. But here uh, since it's our first app, that's fine. Next, what type of activity you want to create? a bunch of options here uh, I'm not gonna go into all of those I don't even know what half of those are just go for blank activity that's fine uh, give a name to your activity I'm gonna leave it as default here main activity is fine navigation type you can select uh, the type of navigation you want in your action bar here and in your activity so there's tabs tabs and swipe if you want to one of those applications where you can like go left swipe left to right uh, tab uh, swipe with tile strips and drop down from the action bar now you can see as soon as you select one of these you get an error here because we are supporting 2.2 and uh, this tabs and swipe doesn't work on 2.2 it only works from SDK 11 which I believe is what is SDK 11 11 is 
Oh, it's somewhere in between honeycomb and gingerbread. I don't know what it is. So two, three, something probably. I, I guess it's two point three. I mean three point zero is STK eleven. So if you want to use any of those, any of these, you would have to go go back and change the minimum supported uh, Android version. I'm gonna choose none. We we are making a single page application. There's no need for any navigation. Click finish, and then to go off the tools, we'll churn and generate our basically our skeleton app for us. You can see it's appeared there, and if you look at the bottom right here, something is still happening: loading data, building, and there we go. We have our app. I'm gonna. Try and minimize a few things here, so we can get some oopsie daisy. Right. So this is the package explorer. You can see our our project is here, converter. Yeah. If you see the res folder here, then the layout folder, and then the activity main XML is what's open right now. Activity main XML. This is a layout file. And what a layout file is is what defines the way a, a layout looks basically a, a, an activity looks so you can view it in code so this this is XML and this XML is what defines the look of this layout you can see there is a hello world here included by default and I click on that Press the delete key on my keyboard and just get rid of that. Now, uh, what we want to do is design this basically. So let's go back. I'm going to put a medium. You can see, like, this is a visual design tool. So uh, all of the widgets and views which Android supports, you can find them in here. A lot of stuff going on in here, so what we want is a what's called a te text view. So I just you know take one of here, like a medium size one. I want the text to be of a medium size. Drag it on the on the take it and drag it on the canvas here. Now after I have a, this medium text, I want a, I want a field to enter my text, and so I want I want this here so the user can enter the the centimeters. Oops. So got a text field here. You can see there are a bunch of text fields and these are all pretty much the same text field but like uh, like this number field is limited to numbers only. So the user will not be able to enter any any characters. So, you know, we, because we only want him to enter the centimeters, we don't want him entering a, B, C, D, or anything like that. So take the number here and drag it onto the field. Now you can see the position is a bit off. I'm just going to adjust it. Put it there. Maybe drag it a bit from that side. You can see the, the, the visual tool is kind of... It's a little difficult sometimes to maneuver with it. That's why a lot of people spend a lot of time in the actual code trying to make it look exactly the way they want because the visual tool is so I mean now it's much better than it used to be but still so uh, then we want the the result of the conversion so again I'm gonna take the medium drag it here place it and I'm gonna take another edit text the, these uh, text fields are technically called edit texts Another number. Position that. Maybe that's not the best position ever. Uh, yep, I like that more. Right, so now what we need is uh, a button. The button the user will, will press to convert centimeters to inches. 
go back to phones widget there's a button here just paste it there somewhere now uh, what I want to do is edit some of the properties of these items so let me minimize this so if you see this panel on the on the right here I'm gonna select this medium text now the first thing I want to change is the ID now, the ID is the way you identify a particular view these things are, are each called views button view so and so so I want to change I mean it's given a default ID here text view one but that's it's not the best name in the world so I, I want to know what this is so I'm gonna rename it and something terrible is gonna happen as soon as I do just bear with me and I usually like you can name them anything but I, I like to give them some meaningful names and you know it starts with what it is so it's a text view I'm gonna leave the text Oops. my keyboard is funny I'm gonna call it text centimeters as soon as I press enter something goes terribly wrong and my layout is changing this is because these items are arranged in relation to each other so this uh, this field here was basically saying I should be on the right of edit text one or of text view one but now that I've changed the name of text you want to text centimeter, this guy no longer knows where he should be because the reference has changed. And if you look at the code, you will see this is called a relative layout. So they are arranged relatively to each other. So what I need to do is change the, the reference that these other items have to the to the new correct names. So if I go into the code here. You can see this is the ID right here. This is the new ID I gave it. I'm going to select that and copy that. I'm just pressing Control C on my keyboard. So this edit text here. You can see this edit text, edit text one, is aligned to the bottom of text view one, but we got rid of the name text view one so this this is why you have this yellow line now because it doesn't it doesn't know what text you one is anymore so we need to change it to the new name of text you one which is text centimeters so I'm gonna change that here now you can see the alignment is back now I'm gonna change the name of this one here uh, edit text edit centimeters again I'll uh, leave that edit there because later it makes it much easier to refer to, the, to these things as you can see everything went to to crop again but that's fine now this is the, the inches one I'm gonna call it text inches now don't worry about the 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 layout going all over the place we're gonna fix that in a minute edit text inches so this is the uh, the edit text for the for the inches and the button I'm gonna call it button convert now now what I need to do is basically you see all these references to the old names have gone yellow because basically there's no idea what these are anymore so I'm gonna just take the new names where it says edit text oops not edit text uh, so this one is referring to the text you referring to edit text one but edit text one is now edit tech edit centimeters so just copy that into here uh, here also uh, control save or once you save is when it checks again for, for all the errors and removes the, the yellow lines you see here it's referring to text view 2 but text view 2 is now text inches I'm gonna copy that put that in oops 
texting just just type that laziness you can see most of the yellow is gone we still have the yellow on the text and I'll explain that a little later basically that this is not an error but we are not following some uh, recommended programming conventions so basically it's checking for best practices and it's telling us okay this is not a best practice we have a hard coded string and I'll explain that later so we have our app looking almost like we want it. We just need to change the, the, the actual text itself. So check that. Go to the right here again. I'm going to centimeters. Put a little. And I'm going to put inches there. Oops. That's, that's a little annoying, but fine. Button, I'm gonna put oh, let me put the try to be consistent. Right, so here this layout is not the greatest thing in the world, but uh, you know it will do. Right, so we have our layout looking the way we want it. So now what we need to do is take this layout and link it to our to our code so we can when the user uh, types uh, whatever value he types in and presses convert the program does what it actually needs to do so I'm gonna expand the package view again package explorer when I go to the source folder SLC folder expand that go to my my package remember when we started the project we gave it a package name so that's right here go to this main activity this is automatically created for us by the by the tools when we created the project now you can uh, get rid of this because uh, our project is not going to use any any menu thing but I'm just gonna get rid of it for clarity's sake get rid of that now what's happening here on on create the on create method is one of the methods that gets fired during the an activities life cycle now what is an activity life cycle again we turn to google and they have a nice you see everybody is searching for activity life cycle they have a nice little diagram on the again on the Android developer site. Well, you should be spending most of your time. So, when an activity is launched, between when an activity is launched and shut down, it goes through these sort of phases depending on on what the device is doing and what the user is doing. So, when we first launch an activity, it calls the on create method. And then it calls the on start method, and then calls on resume. So when it first gets created, it's gonna call this on create. And in this on create method, we usually set the content view. Now the content view is basically what is this activity going to display to the screen? And we want it to, dis to display our XML file, this thing, activity main.xml. So we go set content view r dot layout dot activity main which is the name of this file without the you don't need the dot xml now you're gonna be spending a lot of time getting to know this stuff I mean for this simple application we pretty much only need on create but uh, depending on an application uh, you might have to use a lot more of these or all of these because because of the way Android is basically made to work because uh, for example if you if you're using your app and you switch out and you're using another app Android might decide to kill the first app you are using because it's trying to free up memory or some other resource so you have to sort of watch for these events so when an, when Android decides to to kill your process here it will fire some one of these events on on pause let's say 
and so if you have any data you need to save you probably need to intercept these events and do your thing in there okay back now I said we set the content view r.layout.activity.main but let me try to pin this Ugh, that's annoying That's really annoying. Oh, mm. Ah, there you go. God damn it. Okay. Uh, set content view R. Now, what is R? You never created an R anyway, so. ARA is automatically generated by the Android uh, SDK and Android tools. So what ARA is is it's sort of a link between this layout, these layout files, these XML files, which are which are not Java code. So you know, in in your source code, Java can know really nothing about these XML files. So the Android SDK has an automatic process of sort of reading this layout files and other XML files and turning them into Java basically so this R class will contain all of these uh, layouts and all these uh, views but R is completely automatic you should never have you should never touch R. R oh, by the way is in here I believe you could go to gen you see there's an R class right there you can open it I mean it doesn't make much sense much human sense anyway you should never have to touch that so just leave that alone just know there's an R in there somewhere so R that layout so we want uh, we're going to R and we want a layout file and the layout file we want is activity.main and so if we were to launch this application right now it would launch this activity and it would show this uh, layout in the activity now what we want to do is take uh, just let's just think what our program does it's gonna take the value in here I mean when the user presses the button it's gonna take whatever value is in here uh, convert it into do some math on it convert it into inches and put out the result in here so we need to link these three things these three views need to be linked in the code now the way we do this is depending on the the type of view so the first one is an edit text we go edit text uh, again give it give it a, a meaningful There's a method called find view, find view by ID, and by the way, uh, to bring up these sort of autocomplete things, I'm pressing Control Space. So when I when I when I typed find and then Control Space, it brings up suggestions on what I could be looking for. So I want to find view by ID. Just gonna press Enter here. And then I'm gonna go R again dot I ID because I'm finding the view by the ID dot and it'll pop up all all of the names of those views we created in the layout file. So we want the edit centimeters here. Now you can see there's a bunch of red. First of all, edit text. Java basically has no idea what an edit text is. We need to import Android that widget dot edit text. Just uh, sorry if that was too quick again. Uh, to remove that, what I did is simply hover my mouse over this, and it will pop up these suggested fixes, and I choose import edit text. And you can see here it gets imported. Android that widget dot edit text. You can see there's one more error here find view by id finds a view and returns a view it does not return an edit text basically it doesn't 
sort of magically figure out that this is an edit text and I should return it an edit text. So we have to cast it. So what we do is edit text. And now everything is hunky dory. We find a view, we cast it into an edit text, and now it sits in our edit centimeters. Uh, we want to do the same thing for the inches. Copy paste. There's a lot of this going on in programming. Inches. Just gonna change this edit. Oops. Edit inches. So that's that. Now we need a button. Same deal. Uh, convert. Now we're casting to a button. Again, we're going to find a view by ID. Again, Java has no idea what the button is. We need to import. Now, uh, okay, so what, what do we want to do now? We what we want to do is when a user clicks the button, we want something to happen basically. So what we need to do is capture that click, that uh, click or touch. I always call it click, but you know the touch event on the button. So there are a few ways you can do this. A simple one, if you only have a few events you want to capture, is for example this button. We take a button, the button convert dot we set an on click listener on it so set on you can see there is a suggestion here already and then here you go new again on click listener finish that off it will generate that automatically now you need to go to the end here and add a bit i don't know why they don't just include that automatically but there you go there's some red again. We need to import. Just hover, import on click listener, Android view, view. And that's fine. So now every time this button is clicked, it will fire this on click event. So whatever you want to happen when the button is clicked needs to be in here, in this on click, on click event. Right, so what do we want to happen when the button is clicked? We want to get this value, convert it to inches, and put it out on this field. So I'm going to get the value from edit centimeters. Dot Sorry about that. Where we do we want to store the value? I'm gonna declare a double. Uh, call it centimeters. It's gonna take the edit centimeters. Now the way you get uh, whatever is in the in the in the text field, you go dot get text. Now get text will return an editable. What you need to do is get get text dot to string. Now again this finish that off. This will return a string. Obviously you can't store a string in a double. So what there are some nice little methods in here. Go double dot value of string. So what this does is oops, take whatever string you give it and tries to convert it into a double. Now you can see there's a red here. This is because of some Java basically stuff. Uh, we're trying to call a non-final non variable edit centimeters 
in an inner class so we need to make these final there's there's a bunch of ways you can do this but this is just java stuff this has nothing to do with android final variables and inner classes and all that okay so now we have taken the the value from the edit centimeters when we've put it into this centimeters double now what we want to do is have a double for inches and take our centimeters value and convert it to inches how do we convert centimeters to inches well we turn to google once again that's how Ah, it tells us one centimeter is 0 0.3 uh, inches. Just gonna copy that value there. Go back. So we take our centimeters, we multiply them by, by whatever conversion value we have here. So now we have our inches, and now we need to take the inches and set it on our on the on the results uh, text field here. So to do that we do edit inches dot set text and put the inches in. Now of course set text is expecting a string. This is a double, so we need to do the reverse of what we did before basically value of All right pretty sure that's it now there are some cases we are not catching here because this is just a getting you started type of thing so if what if the field is blank right the program might crash I mean if the user hasn't entered anything in the centimeters are we, are we going to have a crash uh, probably but I'll leave that to you as a homework just you need to check it if if uh, edit centimeters dot get text dot to string is empty then don't do anything or throw up a warning or something like that you know that's up to you now we want to run this how do we run it well I'm gonna run it on a virtual device so go up here and click the Android virtual device manager uh, you can see I already have a few virtual devices here so if you watch the first video this shouldn't be too shocking but I'm gonna create a new one here just for everyone's sake I want it to be a Galaxy Nexus I'm gonna call it Galaxy Nexus 4.2 is fine hardware keyboard present I'm gonna leave that out no front camera SD card 100 should be fine I'm gonna take snapshot I explain all this stuff in the first video so now we can see there's a error here it says invalid name you can have spaces here put an underscore that should be fine okay it's gonna create another virtual device I'm gonna select that Click start, launch it, and that will fire up. Error. Okay, I know what this error is. There's basically a bug or something in these tools. There are a lot of bugs, but this one I just dealt with. Select that again, uh, edit here in the RAM. You need to set it to 512, unfortunately. Yeah, so that's that. Let's try to start it again. There you go. My virtual device is gonna fire up. As you can see, no one is not. No, I can write perfect code, not even Google. So don't worry about it. It's all about finding bugs and finding ways around them. 
Okay, I'm just gonna wait on that to to start. This can take a while, the, the first time especially. Uh, I'm just gonna say a few words on this set on click listener. There, there are a few ways to intercept these click the click events. This is a very simple one, but as you can see, if 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 I had say ten buttons, this would get pretty cumbersome. So there are a few more ways you can do this. Well, the the one way I, I usually do this is uh, you do when implements on so your your activity will implement on click listener. You can see this has produced an error here. Hover there. We need to implement the on click method. So just click add an implemented method, and it will create this on click thing. And in here, you see this on click receives a view, right? So the view is the thing that got clicked. So what we usually do is we go switch in here. We put in a switch statement. Again, that was control space and then enter. We switch on the view v on the ID of the view. Is ID get ID? Yep. Oh God. So uh, because let's say we have ten buttons, right? Each button has its own ID. So we we need to know which button has been pressed and sort of act on that. So we switch on the on the ID of of the view that was clicked, and then in here uh, we go. Right, so if it was the button convert ID that got clicked, then do this stuff. So we will just move whatever we have into here, and then we would. This is a little cleaner way of doing click detection. Now, of course, you have to make some minor changes if you just move this into here, then these will no longer be visible you need to move move these outside anyway let's have more java stuff again scope and visibility and all that good stuff gonna remove that right we're back this thing is still firing up i'll wait until it does and we'll get back right so let's start it up you can see it's a nexus, and it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna go to my package explorer. Now I'm I want to run the, the this application. What I usually do is right click the project here, run as Android application, and then you can see it's doing its thing here, launching. And if you open the console. And you switch to Android, should be able to see some info here. It's uploading the APK to the emulator. It's installing converter.apk. APK is the Android application sort of file file type thing. So it's installing, starting it's starting the activity. Aha! Uh -huh. So the, our well, it looks quite terrible the inches has gone all the way to the right anyway let's see if it works when I enter some centimeters in here now you'll see that it hasn't okay here we go I thought there's a there's another bug in which the virtual keyboard doesn't pop up but I guess didn't happen this time okay so you wanna now the first thing you'll notice is the keyboard has come up with a numbers view. There's no ABCs, and that's because we chose the the numbers keyboard. So the numbers, I mean text field. You can see input type here. It says number. So Android automatically limits the input to just numbers. So I'm gonna enter 100 centimeters. I click convert, and I get 39. 
dot something inches and that is probably correct let's see here 39 yeah well, so it works and that's pretty much it that's our first very simple Android application you now you don't have to use a virtual a virtual device you can use a real device I'll make a short video on how to set up your your phone for development it's all pretty simple but I'll, I'll do that next okay so question comments in the comment field please be gentle bye